Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Lizical where we do everything card making. Today we're going to be doing what I'm calling is a 3D platform card. Um, I showed an image at the beginning which was my inspiration for this. Apparently it was a die from Simon Says Stamp which I will link down below because it's still available. And I'll also link the uh, video for how to put it together because it's a little bit different than what I'm doing today. This one I just kind of like made up by looking at the photo and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with two four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels which is great because these are just regular A2 panels. You can get um, two of these cards out of an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper which is perfect. And for the matting panels, you'll need a strip of one and a quarter inch and three quarter inch pattern paper and cut them to four inches in length each. This will cover the front and top area and the back. For a message, if you cut a solid color panel, you can write it on the back of that instead of cutting the clear acetate. Um, or you can include it as a separate piece of paper if you want or uh, write it on the bottom of the card. I personally would just write the message on a separate piece of paper and include it in the envelope with the card separately and then maybe just sign my name and date on the card itself at the bottom. Um, and I also showed some like buffalo check papers that I made. I might sell the digital files for this in my uh, website soon. Uh, it's not available at the moment, but I've been dying to try this. I printed um, this file onto Michael's 65 pound recollections cardstock, which is what I usually use for my layering. And it works perfectly. I have a stamp, but it only does like a six by six area. So again, I've been wanting to try this for quite a while. And it turned out really well, which is why I did so many colors. I have them ready for Christmas cards, Halloween cards and whatnot now, but Anyway, onto the card. <laughs> Just thought I would let you guys know that maybe I will do some prints. Uh, you'll have to experiment with your own card stocks. If it gets too thick for your printer, it might not work. Um, but again, the 65 pound card stock worked on my Epson 2800 series printer. And if you use the matte presentation setting, it prints perfectly, no lines or anything. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have two four and a quarter by five and a half inch sheets of paper. You're going to score it at one, two and a half, three and a half, and five inches. And that will give you your box with a half inch little um, tab, which I then just cut the corners off of just to help them, you know, sit nicely so you don't see them poking out or anything. And then for this middle portion, I cut this panel, acetate panel, to three and a quarter by four. Four is like the max height you can do for this style just because it it folds a bit differently than the Simon's um, die set. So instead of this middle panel going in two like this base, it kind of just like folds the base flat, which you'll see in a bit. And it will still fit in a four and a quarter by five and a half inch regular like envelope and everything. You can make your panel the exact width of the card if you want. So you can do it four and a quarter by four inches in height. But again, four inches in height is the highest you can go with this. I like this option as opposed to the die set where it kind of like tucks into the boxes just because it gives it a bit more of a solid base. And it also, um, just lets me add dimension to this like the other one you can like really not add any dimension to it maybe a layer or two of cardstock for any um, die cut images but like no foam tape at all or anything and I like to add dimension to my card on this so I will be using foam tape on it to prop up some of the pumpkins and I just like ha having that forward dimension with these types of cards so um to me, this box is better, it's easier, it doesn't have any dies that you need to use for it. You just need a trimmer to cut your panels out and a scoreboard for scoring your panels and that's about it. Um, I'm using an MFT set again. This one's not in stock and 
you can like st shop your stash for anything similar. I promise to come out with a an adorable Halloween set in August. <laughs> um, that is my goal. I might have to make them larger stamp sets just because I do have a lot of ideas and things that I want to get onto those stamp sets. So there might be a, two stamp sets that I release in August. One will be ghosts and one will be like pumpkins and maybe tombstones and whatnot. Like I'll like mix and match it as much as possible. Add a couple sentiments to each set and whatnot. So you can buy one or the other or you can buy them both if you need them. So there won't be any repeats between them. Um, and I'm very excited to work on that set, but I also need to work on things before that. <laughs> um, but again, I just wanted to let you guys know that I will have a set for Halloween coming out because I know I keep using this one because this is like the cutest one I have with larger ghost images because I do have the Hello Bluebird and the Mama Elephant, but they're like little smaller like agenda sized images and I needed something a little bit bigger for this card uh, so I decided to use this again but I will come up with something for Halloween for sure. If I could I would just honestly design Halloween and Christmas sets all year long um, but I do need to, you know to add to my collection as well so birthdays coming in January we'll see what's for March and May Christmas and Halloween in July and August for sure and I'm just super pumped to get started with those. But anyway, back to the card. Um, right now I'm just doing all of my coloring. I do do a little bit more work on this card after because I do realize that it's a little unbalanced the way I laid it out. I probably should have moved it towards the right a little bit more, but I do like the fullness of it. I'm like looking at it now over on my table. This might actually be one of those cards I might not be able to get rid of because I love it so much and I might want to display it. I bought some cute little shelves to hang up in my rooms for cards that I don't want to get rid of and I will just display them on there until there's no more room and then maybe I will get rid of them in a you know year or two but we'll see. <laughs> um, but I do end up cutting an extra one of the smaller pumpkins and adding some white highlights which I forget to add to my cards a lot quite a bit especially in videos because I'm probably like rushing through to get you know it finished um but i am trying to you know make them a little bit more fun so i do add highlights with my signo white gel pen now i bought a set of gel pens because i needed a gold and a silver and i bought the there's like a th three pack on amazon and it's gold silver and white i tried the white it's actually my new favorite gel pen for white highlights and stuff I don't like the jelly roll. It doesn't work half the time for me. Um, I have the size 10 or 1.0, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it just, it never works properly for me. I have the five and the eight as well. Um, and then I also moved to the Posca marker after that, but I find because it's an acrylic paint pen, it's a little too wet on the cardstock sometimes. And if you have to do more than one layer, it kind of like chews up the paper a bit. Um, so I'm very happy with the Signo. I did try Signo when I first started card making because I heard it was like the best one to use and I didn't like it. Maybe it was just like a bad pen at that time, but I have decided to switch back and I love it. So that is my new gel pen for now. <laughs> just FYI guys. <laughs> um, but anyway, I have now transferred these to my scan and cut, cut the images out. I cut them out in black as well because this is acetate. I want to make sure I cover up that back where you're going to see the adhesive through. And instead of backing it with white, which is what I would normally do for most of my cards because I normally use a white card base, um, I decided to use the black just to help it blend in. You don't necessarily need to do this step just because the recipient's not really going to be looking at the back of the card. Um, the front should always be displayed, obviously, but uh, I just thought it would give it a little bit of a cleaner look. I could have also probably colored the white borders into black if I wanted to, but I like that sticker look that the white border gives. Uh, I also cut out these little clouds from a set. I think I bought this off of like Wish like years ago. Um, it's just three little clouds. I cut the biggest one and the middle size one. I end up using only the biggest one because that's where I stamp my sentiment and I use the Hello Beautiful sentiment on it. It does get covered up a little bit with the tombstone but not enough to like alter 
like the way it reads. I did have to place it very um, strategically because I didn't want it to cover anything up. Because like if I cover up that B, it's just going to look like an R. So I made sure I covered up the O's for that. But I couldn't go beyond the top of that acetate, which is was my problem. Like I could probably, if I was really worried about it, cut the base of the tombstone off and then just left it without that base, which would have been fine. Um, but I think it turned out pretty well the way it is. And what now I'm doing right now is just adding a little bit of foam tape to the smaller pumpkin. I do again, add another smaller pumpkin to the right of it. So the, um, the finished card in the photo that you'll see is like small, large, small pumpkins along the bottom. And then I add one of the bats. I stamped two, but I didn't really think that the the little one was needed, so I just left it out. And I add, again, the white highlights afterwards. I am using a mixture of double-sided tape as well as glue on this, just because the double-sided tape automatically just sticks to the acetate. And then the glue is just there as a precaution. But that's pretty much our card for today, guys. I feel like I fast talk through this whole video, but I try to get out as much information as possible. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and let me know what your thoughts are. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe because I'd love to have you guys here. We are actually approaching 1100 subscribers, and I will be doing a giveaway soon. I'm not going to do it this week now, but I will do it, uh, let's do it next week for sure, and I promise that it will be good. Also, if you're not already following me on Pinterest or Instagram or Facebook, you can head on over there. All my links are in the description below. I'm trying to post more often there, so I do try to post Monday to Friday now. And, you know, once in a while you get pictures of my cats on Wednesdays, so uh, that's exciting. And, yeah, uh, so thanks for joining me for today, guys. And until next time, bye.